Right everyone, full focus now on Dundee. We've done all the European stuff, all roads now lead to Dens Park and that's what we're focusing on today's video. It's going to be probably a little bit of a shorter video for you today because it's a Saturday and believe it or not I do have plans later on, don't want to spend all day editing a video. It's a big game, blah blah, I say that before every single match, every single Celtic game is a big game. This is no different especially after dropping points against Livingston last week. What I would say about this game is that with it being the final game before Grown, another international break, it will probably affect our mood during that international break, certainly my mood, and it will probably determine how we feel about the last seven games since the last international break. That's maybe a little bit extreme, actually. I think if even if, God forbid, we drop points against Dundee tomorrow, on the whole, you would look at this chunk of fixtures since the last international break as being generally positive. But if we took the three points tomorrow, you could for sure say that at the very least we have closed the gap at the top of the table since the last international break and, of course, one or two Europa League games and secured third place in the group at the very least. It would be very successful with the only real black mark being those drop points at home to Livingston. But we're not talking about that. We're moving ahead to tomorrow. Now, what will we get from Dundee? It's pretty hard to know because they've been really up or down this season. The one thing we do know is that Lee Griffiths will not play tomorrow against Celtic. That's due to Article 65 in the SPFL's rules. I believe Sean Byrne is also out of tomorrow's game. He's a pretty industrious midfielder, so obviously that's a bonus uh, to us as well. In terms of Celtic's injury news, uh, as we touched on yesterday, Stephen Welsh near Beaton, nothing serious with those two. Beaton was just cramp on Thursday night. Welsh was, as Ange said, nothing serious at all. So we're hoping that both of those players will be available for tomorrow. Whether they'll both start is another issue. In terms of players missing, it's just really the long-term ones. Starfelt, Rogic, Julian, uh, Taylor and Karamoko Dembele as well. Let's do our team nice and early this week. Of course, Joe Hart in goals with a back four of Anthony Ralston, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Stephen Welsh and Josip Juranovic. I'm going for near Beaton in midfield, anchoring it with David Turnbull and Callum McGregor in front and Abada on the right, Kyogo in the middle and Jota on the left. Do you notice I just go one name for the forwards because everyone knows who they are. Yes, it's the same team as the other night. I don't see why you would really change a team that's won away in Europe. Perhaps Mikey Johnson could be an option to start. Perhaps Gigi could be an option. Perhaps even someone like James McCarthy could be an option uh, if Beaton is not 100%. But assuming that all the players who played on Thursday night are fit to start, I would 100% um, go with the, the team that played. And then you've got players like James Forrest coming off the bench as well. Plenty of options. Dundee are second bottom in the table with 10 points from 12 games. That's what the league table looked like before Saturday's games. However, they have definitely improved over the last four games. They've had a couple of pretty impressive victories in that time, they beat Aberdeen at home. Lee Griffiths scoring there against an Aberdeen side who were really, really struggling at that stage. They've picked up since. And last time out, Dundee picked up a pretty impressive 1-0 away win to St Mirren. They also got an equally impressive draw at Tynecastle. Um, however, the other game was a 5-0 home defeat to Ross County. So, yeah. Celtic's last visit to Dens Park was in March 2019 when a 96th minute winner from Odson Edward uh, won it. Neil Lennon running down the touchline, etc. Earlier that season, we beat them 5-0. It was a midweek game. We were 4-0 up by half-time. Brendan Rodgers' side really at their free-flowing best. Prior to that, Boxing Day 2017, we won 2-0 through goals from James Forrest and Lee Griffiths. I want to say that Johnny Hayes got a really bad injury in that game, but I could be misremembering. Earlier that season, we won 4-0 in the quarterfinals 
of the League Cup. And back in the glory invincible season, we won 2-1 at Dens, taking us to within one win of winning the title back in March. We actually won at Dens Park earlier in that season as well. So it's a total of six wins on the bounds at Dens Park. Dundee haven't beaten us anywhere since 2001. So that's the game. Let's just touch on a couple of other bits of news happening. I was going to say at Celtic, not specifically, but kind of surrounding Celtic. Stuff that Celtic fans will hopefully be interested in. And one bit of news certainly happened at Celtic. Greg Taylor has joined Anthony Ralston in getting a new Celtic contract this week. It's the same uh, duration as well. Taylor has signed a new deal until 2025. Uh, a lot of people getting quite upset about this on social media. That's kind of what social media is for. Uh, I didn't celebrate this, but equally I didn't punch the wall at all. Um, I think everyone kind of understands that Greg Taylor probably shouldn't be first choice left back when he returns from injury. But as a decent squad option, tying him down, if Ange is for it, I'm absolutely fine with it as well. And let's be honest, you only have to look at Anthony Ralston to see how quickly perceptions on a player can change. So I trust Ange to make Greg Taylor into the new Kieran Tierney. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Edward Howe, it's threatening to happen again. And no doubt, soon to be out of date, football news. The chat is that he is stalling on a move to Moneybags Newcastle because of difficulties assembling his backroom staff. You really couldn't make it up. It's some laugh. Um, in unrelated news, if any Newcastle fans want any thoughts or advice on some mugs, then feel free to get in touch. I'm assuming that deal is still going to go through, by the way. I, I would doubt that they would have the exact same difficulties that he did at Celtic. Um, but it would be quite funny if, if it just didn't happen again. Um, Newcastle do seem a bit of a shambles at the moment with the whole Unai Emery thing, but that's English football and we are not talking about English football. One thing I do want to mention, um, you may have seen this, Celtic's kit tomorrow for the game against Dundee is going to be slightly different. And by that, I mean that the sponsor is going to be slightly different. Yes, Hamish, point to an international kit where there is quite literally no sponsor. That was a great move. Um, gone are Daffabet tomorrow. I think Magners as well off the back. It's going to be the Celtic Foundation's Christmas appeal tomorrow. That is exactly what the shirt is going to look like. A selection of those will also be auctioned off for charity. The Foundation's Christmas appeal was actually launched this weekend and we all know what that means that we are just probably days, weeks away from seeing Ange Postacoglu dressed as Santa in the Christmas ad. Can't wait to see that. In terms of tomorrow, official Hamish prediction, I'm going for Dundee nil, Celtic 2. Um, me and Stevie will be on the reaction post-match tomorrow from the pub, so um, we'll see how that goes. Please give this video a like. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel as well. It will take you just a few seconds and it will mean that I'm allowed to afford the the good things in life like Eddie Howe mugs. Um, catch you.